Yeah, this place is small, but right? That's what I'm saying. Heaven. Look out, here she comes. That's what I'm Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'll be teaching you guys five different ways you can improve your videos. Um, it doesn't matter what type of videos to be honest because I do apply these to my YouTube videos as well as you know the other client work I've done, you know basketball camps, you know recap videos, you know short films, stuff like that. Uh, so I actually have like a five second timeline right here and through these five seconds I'm going to teach you five different tips. Uh, it's not like one second per tip, I don't know it's kind of cool. So yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, follow me on Instagram if you haven't yet, Van underscore like this video and let's just get straight into it yeah so my first tip is color grading i'm actually gonna break it down by like hiding you know like tracks and stuff like that starting from the ending going to the beginning so right here you can see color grading and what it does basically color grading will make your colors pop basically it's the process of like changing colors um, so here you can see this is it not color graded. It looks kind of boring and that's because I shoot on a flat profile. Uh, yours might be different because you might shoot on auto and the colors might be there already. But just the fact that you can change the colors to fit a mood makes the greens pop and it makes it feel like nature. Um, if it didn't look like that, it would be very dull and not so interesting. This is very like bright and you can lower it here so that it isn't so washed out. And the color grading wasn't even that hard to be honest. So you go to basic correction here. I made it a little bit warmer. I increased the contrast because it was flat and there's not a lot of contrast obviously. The highlights, I kept it lower because it got kind of bright in this area. So I made the whites kind of darker. Um, the shadows, I decreased it because um, I wanted to lower it a bit so that part of it was like darker. It was too bright, obviously. And then everything else is like essentially the same. Once I finished the basic correction, I also added a LUT, which is a lookup table, which is basically a preset for videos. I actually have free ones. You know, check them out in the description. I use the built-in ones for this purpose because if you guys didn't want to download it, you can still use these ones. And I just want to show you guys, you don't need to buy products or, you know, buy certain things to make your stuff look good. A lot of the stuff I do is just in Premiere Pro and what's already available. So I increased the vibrance and decreased this uh, saturation. I just wanted to have a little faded cinematic look. That's why it's so faded. I didn't use the faded film right here. What I actually did was I moved this right here. I moved it up. I actually have a tutorial on how to create the faded film look. So you can check the description for that. I'm not really going to break down, you know, how to do certain things and stuff like that and show you guys how these things affect the video because this video would be super long if I just taught you how to do everything. That's basically it. It's not that hard. Honestly, color grading, you can see basically essentially I just move the contrast right and then the shadows down to make it darker everything else is just slight differences and I changed the temperature a little bit and then applying the LUT helped a little bit but if the basic correction wasn't there it wouldn't look the same so if you go and hide the creative right here which is hiding the you know LUT you can see it doesn't really make that much of a difference the second tip I have is to add movement. So when I started out, you know, creating videos, I always thought you needed a gimbal or a stabilizer or something that costs like $800 to, you know, stabilize your videos. But honestly, if you record everything in slow-mo, so like a high frame rate, like 120 or something like that, you can just slow it down in post and you can just stand still and use keyframes. So this is a perfect example. This first clip right here, I was standing still. Uh, so you press play and it looks like it's moving, right? But it's actually the use of keyframes. So essentially what I did was I set the scale as like 100, 118. Honestly, you can start from 100. I'm not sure what I started at this number. And then you can just slowly zoom in. So set the scale a little bit higher and then it just zooms. And you see what that does. It makes it look like you're moving forward, but you're really not. And actually the second clip actually demonstrates the parallax effect, which I actually made a tutorial on. I'll link everything in the description, but basically actually I'll, I'll just show you right now. So basically what I did for this clip was um, I set the scale as 125 and then um, at the end I set another keyframe and set as 100. Usually this creates the parallax effect. It looks like you're moving away from this guy's face right here. This is my, this is my friend Pavin. He took a couple pictures um, on my Instagram. So let me show you how it looks without keyframes and stuff. Look out, here she comes. That's 
tip number three is also another one a lot of people get wrong it's transitions so i say people get it wrong because a lot of people don't have seamless transitions they'll have transitions but it won't flow with the video from justin audisha's video he actually mentioned this i forgot what video it was but he said that a majority like 90 percent of the transitions you need are literally just normal cuts or fades on this sequence right here all you need really is a fade you don't need some smooth zoom in transition <laughs> It's seamless because it kind of fits with the speed and pace of the video. If you were to do some fancy transition, it wouldn't fit. All you want to take in mind is that, you know, make the transition as simple as you can and as seamless so it looks, it flows really well. So most of them will come with fades. Some will come with, you know, certain cuts. You know, I get with higher, you know, fast paced videos like music videos or, you know, rap music videos in particular, you'll need to use flicker transitions and stuff like that. But I wouldn't do it if there wasn't any, you know, fast movement or anything like that. If it was a slower video, there's no point in using the flicker transition unless it kind of went with the beat or something like that. But I think not enough people can seamlessly integrate their transitions into the videos. That's the big tip I have for you guys. The pace of your videos using transitions using music as well that's the next tip actually i think yeah tip number four uh, right here is music so you want to find music that's the same pace as the audio or same mood as the audio so with this music that i have right now i found it on epidemic sound found the sound effects on epidemic sound as well so you can check that out in the description but basically it's a summer vibe it's also very smooth and calming that's kind of what i wanted to get across and it fits the whole mood like this whole speed um i actually tried to find summer songs that were slower. So this is actually the perfect song. You see what I mean? The pacing is good. It's because of the music, because of the movement of the videos. It's the fact that it's in slow-mo. There's a lot of things that go into it. So uh, let's play it without the music. Let's see how that goes. Not as good, right? No, actually, let's use another song. See? It proved my point. A little bit. You'll see if it's a longer video. You you can tell. The last tip is to focus on sound design. So you want to layer sounds. You know, in an environment like this, you want to have like birds chirping, you know, people walking, you know, people talking. So with the sound design here, I added the last two clips right here. If you go to properties, you'll see what it's called. So right here, this is called forest birds chirp. Are we not in a forest? It fits the environment, right? Um, next one I think is leaves or something like that. So yeah, bush and leaves movement. You can find these on YouTube and basically it adds to the environment. You see what you hear. There's a lot of uh, tutorials on how to improve your sound design. So you can check those out. Not by me, but people who know more than I do. And even um, if you mute these, you can hear just the original audio of the real clip. Like the original clip, it has audio. So let's play with no audio and then with audio. You'll see there's a big difference. You don't get the same vibe. You don't get the same feeling in your heart. I think a lot of the ways that scary movies and, you know, heartwarming Will Smith and Denzel Washington movies really hit you is because the music, the sounds. The only reason scary movies are scary is because the pacing of the, you know, movies, they, they go very slow to very fast. I don't know, the music, the sound effects, literally what I just thought, the fact that the color grading is so dark. You look at Pursuit of Happiness, the colors are happy, you know, when it's happy. Colors are sad when it's sad. The music is sad when it's sad. The music is happy when it's happy there's sound effects if you if you look closely to movies there's a lot of sound design so let's play it look out, here she comes. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, the last four tips aren't that hard to accomplish. I think color grading is the hardest. My biggest tip, like I said before, less is more. I used to think once I learn more stuff and integrate it into my videos, I'll be making better videos. But honestly, I always knew what was good. You know, the basic stuff, the colors, the sound, the movement, and all that sort of stuff. I just thought that the equipment was limiting me. But honestly, I've been using keyframes more and less of my stabilizer now than I was before. You know, I used to think, oh, when I get a stabilizer, I'm going to be using it all the time but most of the stuff i shoot is handheld this is handheld right here and yeah hopefully you guys enjoy this video hopefully it helps you out my name is steven and i'll see you in the next